Welcome back, legends, heli geeks, choppers, lovers of radio control, even you stick bangers, um, and of course our friends from DCS World, who just love anything to do with flight in, in the simulation. Um, so, um, welcome to this episode. Uh, if you're not sure, um, because of the episode title, um, what this is all about, then go and take a look at that video up there. Uh, one of two parts, um, and it's worth watching them both because it will tell you how I was able to lose for a whole week a 700 size helicopter. Uh, now that 700 size helicopter is called Bella, and Bella is a donor machine for a Bell 222 700 size scale fuselage project known as Project 6. And you can see the video up there, you can click on that and uh, find out what that's all about. Uh, it took a week for me to get that helicopter, fa uh, helicopter back, a week of searching by my uh, friends, or comrades, brothers in uh, Phoenix Rotors. Um, I, I know what you're thinking, how can you lose a 700 size helicopter? Look at the size of it. Um, it commands presence in the sky, how can you lose it? And I agree, you've got more chance of not losing your virginity in an Amsterdam whorehouse. Hello there, it's me. Captain Stefan van der Haas Gracht of the Amsterdam Police again. He's my partner, and also I'm very happy to say my lover, Ronald. <laughs> no. Obviously, like in any big city, we are having ourselves crime. So I'm very sorry to say the English boys who are drinking too much and fighting always with themselves. Ouch! Well, we take a very strict approach with these um, people and are arresting them and taking them to the police station where they are put in the custody of the WPCs. That is the women prostitute constables. <laughs> And they are giving him some excellent hardcore sex and soft drugs. <laughs> After which they become quite pleasant. So we are also giving them some tickets for IX matches. But I did lose it. Um, and it took a week to get it back. Uh, the night before, I sort of got sent the picture from Supermoon. What is huh? a Supermoon? He is a friend of Superman. But he had found it. Um, my good lady wife, Mrs. Hellyshed, bought me the T-Rex 700X. And you can see a video up there of that unboxing. This video then is about that build process. And we're gonna take this face off and we're gonna take a really good look at the 700X. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's what we're about here. So let's dive in. No, I'm not the invisible man. I'm behind you. Um, I'm behind the camera now. Um, now look, um, look at what you're looking at there. The Align T-Rex 700X, beautiful machine. Um, but as I said in, uh, in a video, you know, Align always give you a fantastic looking canopy. You can see that there, but wouldn't it be lovely to have it luminous orange or luminous green or luminous yellow? although clearly that borders on the sort of SAB territory, um, it would be nice to see something maybe slightly differently from a line. But saying that, they always provide uh, fantastic canopies and this is no different. You can see at the front there, a couple of cutouts for heat um, for the ESC, the speed controller, and of course the motor. This has got a very powerful motor in it, a 490 kV, um, and uh, that is more than enough. Um, for pretty much anybody, I'd say. Uh, right, um, so let's take his face off, shall we? Yeah, take his face off. Now, I don't really want to get in front of the camera here, um, because look, if you go to the Mo if you go and see the Mona Lisa, you don't want to stare at the back of someone's head, do you? You want to see it. And I honestly believe that you are looking at the Mona Lisa of the Align T-Rex models right here, right now. So I am not going to ruin it, with my face like a bulldog licking piss off a thistle um, getting in the way. So I've got a I've got a pointy stick, yes, a pointy stick that I can point at things with. Hurrah! Um, which means that I can talk to you about what it is that you're looking at here um, without you having to throw up by staring at Heli Shed's head. Now the first thing to consider is that the frame is actually in four parts. This bottom part here where the orange plastic up at the top here, a nice little housing for the rudder 
um, servo here. Um, and then you've got two parts that bolt onto this, um, obviously each side. The frame is significantly narrower um, than other T-Rex models. Um, and it's about as narrow as the 490 KV. It's very blingy. Um, and I get the fact that, um, you know, a line have obviously done that in order to separate this uh, from other models. And in fact, the LV2 was quite blingy as well. Um, I think you either like that, loathe it or whatever. I think it's in keeping. I like it. Um, if I was to put this in a, in a scale model, I probably wouldn't want quite so much bling in there. But I like it. The servos are very powerful. I think uh, off the top of my head, these are uh, 855s. I'll put a note up there as to whether they are or not. My, my apologies there. Uh, but these motor, these servos are very powerful um, and the uh, rudder um, servo is very quick. 150, 1520 pulse, 333 megahertz. Um, yeah, so, you know, one of the best ones you can get. Very, very good. The frame, I believe, is two or three mil uh, carbon, and when it's put together, is really strong and solid. I've got a couple of batteries in there to weigh it down. You can see the landing skids here, angled at five degrees to keep the tail out here uh, off of the ground, which I think is a great thing because, uh, you know, there are a lot of ground strikes with the L, the E, the L, and the LV2, um, purely simply because the skids were level. Uh, some people like to have level skids, but in doing so, the tail fin is literally on the ground. And sometimes during spool up, some people had um, you know, ground collisions and that's not good. The uh, head assembly or the rotor head assembly is as you would expect from a line. It's the same sort of setup. You haven't necessarily got to go into a manual if you've done these a few times before. Your typical sort of um, uh, 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 thrust bearing setup inside with your feathering shaft and your couple of bolts. Uh, I, I remember rule two of uh, building a helicopter is always construct first and lock tight second. And for me, that took a significant amount of time. And you know what? That is what you do in order to be able to build it and have it solid afterwards and have faith in it. The ESC, which I've mounted on the tray here, um, is nice and solid. That's on some uh, Velcro. Um, I've just got a normal, very simple six channel receiver here going to the other side, which is uh, a Micro B Stex. Uh, some mi Micro B Stex? Uh, yeah, mi Micro B Stex Pro Plus, etc. etc. Um, really nice model. You can see this frame, um, frame bolster in here, either side of the motor. We'll have a walk around in a minute so you can get a closer up. Um, but look, it's a nice, solid, dependable, what you would expect from a line. Uh, it's significantly thinner and in lots more frame parts, purely and simply uh, so that it's cheaper if and when you have a crash. <laughs> Final thing I'll say at distance from this angle um, is that, look, the one-way bearing and the main gear came pre-assembled, already Loctite and everything else. Remember, of course, um, that Robbie should, in fact, you can see it in the video up there, um, that uh, all of this is quality controlled right by Robbie Shorter um, in uh, Hinkley in Leicestershire. So they test the ESC, they test the motor, they test the servos, and they put together complex safety areas uh, for you. And that is the main uh, gear and the auto rotation uh, gear underneath. Um, and they also put together for you at the tail end, they put the main umbrella gear in. Now you could strip that down and redo it, but uh, there is absolutely no need to do that for those. You can have assurance that they have been put together and Loctited, um, but it's a safety feature. All right, let's have a really good close look now. Uh, you can see these servos, they're black uh, at the back here where they used to be silver, etc. Really nice in keeping the heat sinks on the outside. Um, interestingly enough, the plastic that you're seeing here in the pictures, it looks like it's like a gloss plastic. It's a plastic composite with carbon fiber. So it's you know not out of a children's box. I mean, it's pretty bloody solid, I can tell you that. Um, but uh, it's quite dull and there's a couple of nipples on it, a couple of nipples. Now normally we, we like nipples, but 
we don't really want to see you know lumps on the frame um, and I've got one there there's one you might be able to see it I'm not sure but there's another one on the other side a nice little capture system for the uh, rear rudder for the rear rudder there's only one there's only one holy shit uh, a nice capture system for the uh, for the rudder servo uh, a, a good enough space on the front end here I've just put a a, a standard six channel receiver on there. Um, there isn't really the room to mount the ESC in these side pods, which we could do with the L and the LV2, and even the 700E. You're pretty much uh, limited to keeping the ESC up at the top. And for those stick bangers, you'll want it there because, of course, the airflow through the canopy is going to keep that super cool through there. On the other side, uh, well, much of the same. God, jeez, I'm right. Uh, we've got a MicroBeast X Plus Pro you, 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 cheeky little uh, fly barless unit there. I absolutely love them. Um, all those. Everybody knows uh, how to set them up. But, you know, this machine has already been set up now. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, really nice. You can see that. I like the frame. I like this. This is very nice. Uh, it's very, very, very blingy. Um, but you know, that, that is, that, I think that is the appeal. It just looks expensive and it looks fantastic and it looks efficient. Uh, the boom is a matte carbon. I'm still not convinced that's carbon, to be honest with you. Having looked inside, obviously, before I attach it to the front drive, having looked inside, you know, I'm pretty sure that that's aluminium. The meshing, which I've seen some people having problems with, I had absolutely no problem with whatsoever, and it meshes very nicely. I don't think you can see that, guys. But it meshes very, very nicely with the main gear and the auto-rotation gear. The rear boom braces are particularly much, much thicker. I said in the unboxing video about one or two mils. Uh, but I think you'll find that they're uh, much thicker than that. Um, coming back to the end here, your standard sort of brace system, and then at the end here, the tail fin, which I really think that uh, a line needs to redesign this. I think they need to redesign it because I haven't seen one T-Rex 700 that doesn't have a harmonic at around about 12 to 1400 RPM and sometimes over 1700 RPM to about 1900 RPM, where that will wobble like a mother. Um, and you don't want to spend a grand and a half on a helicopter and having a wobbly end here. It's as simple as that. So this, in my view, needs redesign. I'm going to caveat with the fact that I haven't flown this yet, but I'm willing to bet we'll have a wobbly tail fin. The, uh, the end here, um, uh, 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 the rear drive, is as reliable as you uh, can see it. And as you probably know, the umbrella drive system, which I think is fantastic, some people either like it or loathe it. I like it, it works. And for the 700X, they've redesigned um, the main um, control arm here for the rudder rod, for the control rod. This is now in two separate parts. Not sure why they've done that. The more parts you have, the more chance you've got for failure. Um, but, you know, that is the new design. There we go. So quick summary, uh, finishing off this video really before I do a quick summary. I like it. It's a lovely, lovely helicopter. It took me a long time to put it together. Um, and the reason for that really was because, well, it was my error. I expected rather than inspected. And what I should have done was inspect. Um, inspect the new parts to it. Inspect the new way of putting it together. And by that, I'm talking about the frame that you're seeing there. Um, I, I think when it comes to routing the cables, etc., um, that that um, was um, useful. It was useful. There was a couple of uh, holes that were along here, etc., for me to run the cables along, and likewise the other side. But I did have to drill a couple more holes for me to be completely content. I don't know if I can see this. Oh, crikey, yeah. See, I'm running it down here. Um, because simply there was not the room nor the place. I can't run it along here and I can't run it along here. It was simply too big for the main gear. So perhaps they missed out a trick on that. So there we go. The T-Rex 700X. Um, 
Do I rate it? Absolutely. Um, is it infuriating to put it together purely because there's a lot more parts now? Yes. Is that necessary? I don't think so. Um, is it different than other models? Not exactly. Um, and uh, was it value for money? Well, I don't go back on what I said. It is definitely value for money. I mean, seriously, look at it. It is a fantastic looking machine. Um, was it easy to put together? I don't think so. And I think on this occasion, I think the manual let itself down and perhaps should be up for review. I think that the uh, control rods and the ball ends need a redesign. I think the tail fin is, needs a redesign. And you know what, Align? Just break the mold and do something different with the canopies. They look fantastic, but you know, you could do something to set them apart um, and really make them show in the sky. Um, I'm really looking forward to flying this helicopter, but I wouldn't fly it in the pod and boom format. We're gonna be doing something special with this one. We're gonna be giving it a skin. Um, and once it's got that, we'll then rename it um, or give it a name. Um, and then we'll have a review flight. Um, but look, here's my final thoughts on the 700X. If you're thinking about going out and buying one, then do it, don't think anymore. And if you're concerned about the build process because of the items I've mentioned in here, then don't be. Just do your research and take your time. And don't take my example of throwing yourself at it and losing pretty much a day and a night putting it together. Because the fact of the matter is, You'll spend the next five days fettling and making it right. Uh, this, this is all ready to go now. All I've got to do is fly it. But as I said, we've got one more step to do. Um, until the next video then, where we'll see exactly what that step is. Thanks very much for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.